Hey guys, how you doing? So somebody asked me, did you freelance in Java when you were a freelancer? I did actually. I did do a bunch of freelance gigs with Java, but I was not using Spring Boot because, well, it wasn't invented at the time. I had my own very lightweight framework, uh, which was Java, JSP, Servlets, and Pojos, Plano Java Beans. It was a very simple MVC framework that I put together, so it was designed for lightweight projects. The problem with Java these days is that it's hardly lightweight. Oh, look, I have an audience. This guy's interested in learning to code, I guess. No, no more. I think he heard that I was talking about Ruby. I was going to start talking about Ruby. He said, okay, I'm out of here. Yeah, so if you want to freelance, I wouldn't be looking at Java. I wouldn't be looking at Java to do that, number one, because it's, it's great language. And the infrastructure around Java is extremely robust and powerful. The problem is it's very slow to development. It's not something you want to do. It's not something you want to do whatsoever. You want to stick to much more lightweight, nimble languages and uh, ecosystems. So that's uh, JavaScript, Python, PHP. What you're going to find in the freelance space is that there's a heck of a lot of PHP. So why is there so much PHP freelance work? It's because of the web. Because PHP is such a legacy and small and well, even medium-sized business, but more small business, there's so much PHP being used out there. And a big part of it is, uh, is WordPress, uh, Drupal, uh, Joomla. These are PHP-based uh, content management systems. So you see a lot of people leverage these technologies. So that's just, that legacy is still there. So as a result, uh, as a freelancer, your chances are you're going to be working with pretty much, pretty much small businesses, maybe occasional medium-sized business, and that's what they use. That's the, that's the reason why PHP is so dominant in that space. When looking at Java, you're looking at enterprise. You're looking at medium to large-sized business, well, large is enterprise, simply because of the nature of that technology. And you're not seeing too many new projects started from scratch with Java. Most of the Java work, and there's a ton out there, is working on existing system, like legacy systems. And yes, it will be, it will be probably in spring, but you might see some, uh, some of the older uh, Java frameworks. Like I think Struts was one of them. It was very popular at the time. Not my, uh, not my first choice. So yeah, you know, Java's great, but... It's just that's the nature of the market these days. Another thing you got to consider when you're freelancing is how productive you're going to be. And frankly, Java is not extremely productive. It's a slow to work with, extremely verbose, very hard to configure environment. I gave up Java years ago because of that. Again, and I had heavily invested in my own Java framework. I had done a bunch of different projects in Java. I developed my own systems and SASs in Java. Uh, this was just, um, again, I just understood how unproductive it was, so I, I decided against it. So if I were you, if you're interested in freelancing, I would start, A, looking at the local market, seeing where the demand is. You're probably going to see a lot of PHP, a lot of JavaScript. That's going to dominate for the most part, and it's going to be web stack. You may see the occasional... Uh, iOS development gig or native Android development gig, but that is very, very, very... Uh, for every iOS freelance job, there's probably 5,000 web-based jobs. And um, you're going to see a lot of WordPress. You're going to see a lot of WordPress. And don't let the small WordPress budgets throw you. If you know how to structure your projects properly, you know how to bid, you know how to manage clients properly, properly, you can make a lot of money as a WordPress freelance contractor. You could do very well, but you got to know what you're doing. I hope that helps. I'm Michael Steph. If you like this content, let me know in the comments below. If you disagree with anything I say, let me know in the comments below. If you're a Ruby developer, you need to rehabilitate yourself. Come on, guys. Come on. My book, Web Design Start Here. I wrote this 2015, I think. So it's quite old, almost 10 years old. But guess what? I wrote this to be evergreen. So you can get this on Amazon for very cheap, like for right, 12 bucks.
good book if you like to read. It covers uh, HTML5, CSS3, a little bit of JavaScript, and a few other things. It's designed for total beginners. Now, if you're going to compare this versus Studio Web, I would get Studio Web instead because I actually wrote this book and it was the basis of my far more comprehensive Studio Web courses, which are interactive video courses, over 300 lessons, 1,000 quiz questions. So there's about 25,000 words in the book. And my Studio Web quizzing, it, just the, the words part of the quizzing, because it's all its Q&A and you have to type in answers, and et cetera. Just the quizzing component of Studio Web is greater than this. Uh, more words. I think about 25,000 words. So it's uh, pretty cool. Even in this book, I get into uh, the client server model. So it's not your typical beginner's book. It covers a lot more than your typical beginner's book, but it makes it really approachable. Object-oriented programming using the DOM, object-oriented programming basics. So let me get this open. JavaScript ob objects. And then we get into some writing some JavaScript. So if you're a total beginner and you want to learn to uh, code and you like uh, diagrams, you like stories, nice images. And here I'm explaining the different image types, JPEG versus GIF, PNG, the differences are uh, when you'd use one over the other. This is the book for you. I'm not making any money on this, by the way. I don't own the rights anymore. So when this book sells, I don't make any money. So I'm not telling you to buy this book because uh, I make money on it. I'm just, I know it's a good book.